So today is tutorial day. So we're going to be reviewing step by step how to submit documents for compliance review using Skyslope. Hello and welcome back. My name is Cecilia Peralta. I am a virtual assistant and in this channel I share tips, tutorials and industry insights to help virtual assistants become successful business owners. Okay, so we are in the login page for Skyslope. Once that you put your username and password, then you log in. Uh, normally you're going to see here the logo for the brokerage and you're going to see the agent's name in here. And you are going to see here the monthly statistics, which is telling you how many are scheduled um, for closing, how many are active, pending, closed, expired, etc. If you scroll down, it's going to show you the recent listings and transactions. And in these squares, you're going to see the addresses. Same thing if you keep scrolling down, you're going to see the recent DigiSign envelopes. So DigiSign is the e-sign, the e-signature uh, service that is included with the Skyslope. So here in recent listings and transactions is, is normally where you're going to be working when you upload documents for compliance review. So you could potentially view a transaction, view a listing or access um, the archives, cancel contracts, task and reminders, etc. Okay. So we're going to be creating a new file. That way you can see how easy is the process. So we're going to create new and it's going to be a transaction. It's going to ask you, how would you like to create your file? And you have a couple of options. You can either use the address lookup where you can just search by the address, or you can just search with the Skyslope forms and you're going to be prompt to select who's the owner. And the owner might be the realtor that is uh, using this account. So in this case, we are going to use the address lookup. And what we're going to do is we're going to type for a fake address. For example, we're going to see uh, 12340 Boggy Creek Road in Orlando. All right, we are going to select the address. And as you can see here on the corner, it says address successfully imported six fields. Okay, so once that we selected the address, the agent and the office are going to be automatically added to the form. And just notice that everything that has a red asterisk is going to be mandatory. We have to put the information. And in this case, let's pretend that's the MLS number. And then the street number, the zip code, the city, and the street name along with the state and the county were already transferred over when we selected the address. So we're going to put here who is the co-buyer's agent. So we can type in here and select the person because it didn't find it in the list. It's asking me to add it. Now let's add the sales price. Let's say that it's a $400,000 house. And for the source, you have a couple of options here. It is either from a sign, advertisement, open house, personal referral, corporate referral, prospecting. And in this case, it's asking you if there was an office lead. In this case, it wasn't. And if not, you will have to put the file ID. Now, the acceptance day, let's say that the acceptance day was Friday, the 17th. Now, Checklist type. Here is where you're going to select the type of checklist based on the type of transaction. So for example, let's say that this is a purchase and sale. Uh, it could be a referral. It could be a rental, could be a retainer. In this case, we're going to select purchase and sale. Now the type of representation. So you're going to select in this case, let's pretend it's a purchase. Now what we are going to do is we are going to add the year build and let's say that this property was built in 2010. Now, 
escrow number, we don't have an escrow number, APM, we don't have an APM, and it's not mandatory, so we are going to skip it. And let's say that the closing date is going to be at the end of June. Once that you have all that information already, um, you know, fill out in the form, then you're going to press next. Okay, so here you're going to see on the next page that now the, the file has been created. However, it is in incomplete status, okay, here on the top. Now you can see here that we already complete the transaction details and now we are in the contact tab. And down here, you're going to see again, all the information you already enter. So we are going to, again, fill out all the blanks that are, you know, requested in here. And here we are going to start with the seller. You can always search for contact in Skyslope, okay, in your account. If you, for example, always use the same title company, then you don't have to type it. If you use that same lender in the past, probably it's already here. So you just search it and it's going to bring the information. First of all, please notice here that says seller is a trust company or other entity. If that apply, you obviously going to select it, click in this box. Okay, and now the first and the last name are not mandatory anymore. The red asterisks disappear because if it's a company, what you need to complete is the next line, which is company name. But let's pretend that this is not an entity, it is um, a person. So we are going to uncheck the box. The asterisks come back to the first and last name because it's mandatory. So let's say that um, Maria Sanchez is the seller. Okay. So we are going to complete that information. Please note that the rest of the information is not mandatory. If you have it, obviously you're going to be able to put the information here. So let's say that this is a purchase and you are the buyer's agent, you're not going to have the seller's contact information. So you can just leave it like that and save it or save it here on the bottom. And as you can see now, the seller or landlord, instead of having a red asterisk, what it has now is a green check mark because we are done with that one. Now we're going to go to the next one. So we continue down the list and we're going to do exactly the same thing with the agent and the lender. Okay. So we already complete everything that was required. Now for the home warranty, not every single contract is going to call for a home warranty. So we just leave it blank. If we don't have that information, maybe it's not part of the contract terms. In miscellaneous contacts, if you have someone else that is part of the transaction that you need to add in here, then you have the space. But let's say that we don't, so we are done and we're going to save it. And now that we have completed the transaction details and the contacts details, we can submit. Okay, so now we have a new tab that we have to you know, enter information and it is the commission tab. And same thing, same type of process, we have to complete the uh, fields that are with an asterisk, at least, okay? And here it's going to ask us if that is a personal deal, for example. It depends on the brokerage, of course. Sometimes when it's a personal deal, the commission split might be different. So obviously you will have to check that with your agent and complete accordingly. Now on the other side, we need to enter here the listing commission. So let's say that the listing commission is a 3%. And again, this is just an example. And let's say that the sales commission is also a 3%. All right. Now notice here that you have an asterisk on the sales commission, but not on the listing commission. And let me explain you why. So we said that in this transaction, we are on the buyer side and then obviously the buyer station to already know what the commission is. However, at least at the time of this recording here in Florida with the Stellar MLS, the listing agents don't have to disclose on the MLS how much they're getting for commission. Then the buyer station have no way to know. 
So, but definitely they're going to know what is their own commission. This is why there is an asterisk in here. Now notice here that as we put the sale commission in here, which is um, the 3%, and let me show you, I didn't mention that before, we have in a space for percentage. And in some cases it's going to be a dollar amount. So if that is the case, you will complete this box instead. In this case, when we complete that in here, now the office gross commission is going to change. It's going to be calculated automatically. Now you do have here the next box that you could potentially complete. That is for a TC fee or admin brokerage commission. So as a DC, you could potentially put here your fee. Let's say that you're charging $400 um, for this file, and you're going to put your name in here. Other deductions, and that is going to depend on each transaction. So make sure that you complete accordingly. Now let's review the next one, which is deposit. Will your brokerage hold earnest money? No, in this case. Okay, could be yes, but in this case, it's no. If it's no, there is nothing here to be completed. If it's yes, obviously you have to complete these three boxes. Now, in the case that this was a referral, you are going to select whatever option. In this case, it's no referral, but you could select external or internal. And if there was a referral, then obviously you're going to complete the referral agent name, the referral brokerage name, the amount, and you're going to upload a W-9 form. So now if you do have additional commission information that you need to add here, you have a way to send a note to the compliance department with specific instructions. Okay, so the next one is a commission split. So this is um, going to be used when you are dealing with teams that they do have a specific split. Let's say that the buyer's agent, John Smith, is part of a sales team. So John Smith is going to potentially have a split with the broker, right? But on top of that, John Smith is going to split with the team leader. So once we are done with the commission tab, then we could cancel submit and submit an open escrow. But I put in here that the brokerage is not going to hold the earnest money. So I'm not going to open escrow. What I'm going to do is I'm going to submit the file because the brokerage in this particular case is not going to uh, hold escrow. Okay, so now that I submit that file, I'm going to get one, two, three, four, five new tabs in here that we're going to discuss in a second. And going down, you're going to see the sales documentation that is required by the brokerage for them to review and approve. And you also have the ones in light blue that says if applicable, so they are not mandatory. And moving down to the bottom of the page, what you're going to see is the closing documents. So the closing documents, you're not going to be able to upload any of that until after the property is closed. So you're going to put in here the final closing documents, the copies of the um, agent's checks, etc. To complete this form, what you're going to do is you're going to upload the documents. And it's super simple. You either click here, attach, and it's going to, you know, take you to select from your computer, or you can drag and drop select the document, drag it, and drop it in here. And now it is in review. Comments. Obviously, you know, if you need to leave a comment for the compliance manager explaining something about any of the documents, then you're going to do it and then you're going to save it. So it's super, super easy. Let's move to the next tab. So in this documents tab, what you're going to see is a list of the documents that you upload to this particular file. That's it. Now let's go to the next one, which is log. 
So here in the log tab, every single thing with the date and time and the type of action that was taken, it is recorded in here. Okay, now on the task tab, uh, you're going to be able to create tasks and manage your file from here. I personally don't use it because I already have a task management software and I manage everything from one place, but that might be helpful for you. So in order to do that, you can use a share list. That is something that the broker provide, or you can import the template or you can create a new task. If you click in here on the new task, you're going to see, for example, follow up with buyer and let's say that i want to follow up with the buyer five days after the acceptance day for whatever reason i have to follow up right and that task is assigned to the agent and i'm going to save it okay and when i save it it is going to now show in here okay and once that i am done with that i click on it and it's complete, it disappeared. So that is, you know, pretty basic um, and, and that is how it works. So in this property tab, you're going to have the space to add information about the property if you decide that that is going to help you. For example, you can add the number of bedrooms, the number of bathrooms, if they have a basement, crawl space, anything that is related with the property, occupancy, um, the homeowners association, and things like that. So you can decide to use that uh, tab that might be helpful for you to have everything related with that file in one place again in my particular case i only use sky slope to submit for compliance and i do not use the rest of the tabs that are not mandatory because again as i explained before i use my own task management software and i manage everything from there so that is all it is for Skyslope really and how to submit files for compliance review. It is very user-friendly, intuitive, so I don't think you're going to have any trouble submitting files for review. However, if you do have any questions, you're more than welcome to leave them in the comments. And please don't forget to like and subscribe and I will see you on the next one. <laughs>